hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2024 remake, The Crow. The film is directed by Rupert Sanders and it stars Bill Skarsgård, uh, FKA Twigs, Danny Houston and Laura Byrne. Right, okay, uh, this is the high profile remake of the cult classic from 1994 that starred uh, the late Brandon Lee. Um, and essentially it's a very similar story. We've got Eric and Shelley. Um, they meet at a rehabilitation center. Um, Shelley is in trouble because she's got evidence that Danny Houston's character, um, essentially is a murderer. So she's on the run. Uh, they escape together. They fall deeply in love. Um, Shelley is then murdered by Danny Houston and his thugs. Um, as, along with Eric, he essentially then is given a second chance to come back with supernatural powers and take his vengeance out on those um, that did him wrong. Right, what are my thoughts on The Crow? Well, what what is there to be said about this film that hasn't already been said by everybody on social media uh, and YouTube? It would appear that Everybody despises this film. Every review I've seen of this has been objectively bad. Um, and I think this is one of those films that has been preordained to fail. Um, it was a bold call to try and remake the original Crow. Um, it's it's a cult classic. It's It's much beloved. And there's a few reasons for that. I think a lot of people have got you know, selective memories. When The Crow first came out, um, the real attraction for that film was the unfortunate death of Brandon Lee on set. It, you know, it was massive news at the time. Um, and the film was completed using body doubles and all sorts. Um, and that was the main attraction to that film. In actual fact, um, I don't remember the film being, you know, a huge hit or anything like that, both critically and financially. And I remember when I first saw it, I, I, I wasn't overly keen, I'm not going to lie. I thought that film had pacing issues. And, you know, so I think people are looking at the original through rose-tinted glasses. And it has gone on to develop a cult following, the original Crow. Um, and, you know, it is a very well-made film, absolutely. And it was the... It would definitely have been the breakout role for Brandon Lee that would have turned him into a star. Um, and again, I think a lot of people have got selective memories. There have been a number of Crow sequels um, that have been increasingly bad. Um, so it's not as if this film is like purposely treading on the memory of the original Crow. Um, in actual fact, I do think this film has tried to give itself a brand new identity. It's actually tried to be quite respectful, I think, to the original. You know, it doesn't have any callbacks to the original. Um, you know, it, it, it is genuinely trying to be its own entity. And that's, um, that's a nice thing to see. You know, it's not trying to, you know... Um, be disrespectful to the original and, and you know say oh look at us are we better or that kind of thing it, it has definitely tried to do its own thing now it, to its own detriment as well now i'm not uh, a fan of the crow in a sense of i've read all the comics and things like that you know um so i'm not precious about the franchise or the project or the character um but the original look of the crow of Brandon Lee, you know, is pretty iconic, you know, the way that they made him look. And there's no getting away from it. The way they the way they get skilled Bill Skarsgård to look in this film. Um it just doesn't compare. It doesn't look sinister, it doesn't look frightening. Um, you know, it doesn't look like, you know, pretty much, you know, death's come for you sort of thing. You, 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 you've done, you've had it. Um, I'm here to take you out. Um, it, 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 it doesn't, he just doesn't have that presence to kind of pull that off, which is surprising when you consider this is a guy that played Pennywise. 
Um, I think he needed to kind of dig into his darkness a little bit more for the character. Um, and unfortunately, th or fortunately, they, they, they do try and spend a good portion of the film to build this relationship between Eric and Shelley. Um, for us to, sh to show us their love for each other, which, you know, was a nice thought and a nice idea. Um, I'm qu often, often quite complaining about films where they don't flesh out characters or relationships and uh, that kind of thing. And I do remember that being a complaint from me in the first one, really. Um, it all happened fairly quickly and the relationship didn't feel to me like it had been established. Now, a lot of this I'm going off memory from the first one because I haven't seen it for such a long time. I am going to rewatch it and review it for the channel. And I might watch it and think it's an absolute masterpiece um, because it's at least 20, 20 years since I've seen the first Crow, I think. Um, so the film, kind of, this film is kind of its own worst enemy because you've got Eric and Shelley and the pair of them don't really seem to have much in the way of a personality. Um, They've been fairly poorly written here, and the performances are vanilla at best. Um, and again, this surprises me from Bill Skarsgård because he's, you know, he can he can deliver in regards to performances. So it feels like he has been reined in, um, and you don't really get to see his rage or anything like that. It's just it's fairly sad. Yes, there are pacing issues with this film. Um, it takes a long time for anything really to happen and an even longer time for him to kind of grow into this supernatural being that he becomes. And once he does, there are some very, very well done action sequences and some very graphic action sequences that actually are by far the best thing in the film. Um, they are done very, very well. Um, and you know the wincing inducing stuff when he goes into that opera house with his sword um, it, it's very very well done and, and that's easily the best part no doubt about it um, and then so beyond that you know is this does this deserve if you like the hate that it's getting um, no these things rarely do you know this happens a lot with movies um and you'll watch these movies um and you'll you know you'll go into them almost like pre-programmed to hate them because you know leading up to the film's release this release there have been countless videos from prominent youtubers and um you know social media people you know claiming that this film's going to be terrible and, oh, this film's going to be absolutely shocking, it's going to be terrible. Now, these people can't honestly then go into the theatre, come out and say, oh, do you know what, it wasn't really that bad. Um, no, they have to come out and kind of dump all over it sort of thing um, because they've, they've pre-ordained, you know, they've, they've pre-programmed themselves and everybody else to kind of hate it. So everybody follows suit, you know. And I, I don't necessarily think a lot of people can give a fair, balanced review of the film. Is this um, a really fun and entertaining film? No, it's not. Um, it has a lot of issues. The central characters aren't interesting. Um, the story is, you know, it is decently done, but it's stretched out too long. Um, and it only really delivers in the last 15 minutes, really, the film. Um, 15, 20 minutes in regards to seeing the crow in all his glory. And even then, it, it, while these action sequences are done well, you know, it's, it's not... I don't know, there's no presence there of the character. It's almost like when, in the original crow, when, you know, Eric Draven, you know, develops into this you know um supernatural being you know it, it's it's i don't know it's more satisfying is the word i'm trying to get at than this one um so you know i think this will if you go into this film and you're a passionate fan of the first one you pro simply put this film isn't going to impress you it's not as good as the first one that the um but Saying that, it's definitely not 
as I said recently with the Borderlands film, it's not like not percent on Rotten Tomato about or anything like that. And in actual fact, if you look at the Rotten Tomato score, which I don't put a lot of stock in, if I'm honest, yeah, the critic scores are very, very low. And the audience scores, I think last time I checked, was at 66%. So audiences are enjoying this a little bit better than, you know, what you would call critics. Um, but... You know, it's going to flop. It's going to be a massive flop. It'll probably end up on streaming services within a month because that's what's happening to films like Borderlands. You know, it's being taken out of cinemas early. Um, and then you can go on and, you know, judge it for yourself. Does it deserve the ritual and hate that it's kind of getting? I don't think it does. But at the same time, I'm not going to overly defend this film because it didn't particularly impress me either. Um, it, it It is what it is, I suppose. So... Check it out for yourself, guys. And be fair and balanced when you're giving a review on the film. If you really hate it, then say so. If you thought it was decent, then say so. If you thought it was, you know, nowhere near as bad as everyone's claiming, then say so. Um, and, yeah, I will see you on the next review, I suppose. So thanks very much for joining me.